Marcos Torres here from congachops.com and I just want to give you a brief rundown of your new handheld LP cowbell. Let's talk a little about the history of the cowbell, getting comfortable with your new gear, and get you started playing your first groove. The origin of the cowbell can be traced to herds of roaming animals. In order to help identify which herd these animals belong to, herdsmen place these bells around the animal's necks. Though the bells were used on various types of animals, they are typically referred to as cowbells due to their extensive use with cattle. The role of the handheld style cowbell we're looking at finds its roots in song music, which begins to take its current form after making its way from the rural areas of eastern Cuba to the urban landscape of Havana in the early 1920s. With the evolution of the conjunto ensemble format in the 1930s by the legendary Arsenio Rodriguez, the bongocero's role and responsibility changed considerably, and then the sections of a song where a refrain and ad lib were performed by the singers, known as the coro y soneo, the bongo player would put down his drum and switch to playing a handheld cowbell. Thus the bongo bell, as we know it today, would become a staple in many genres of popular Afro-Cuban derived music. So now that we have some very brief background information, let's get to it. Here we have a lower pitched LP ES9 bongo bell and an LP doodle cowbell beater. It's a pretty average length bell with a bit wider opening at the mouth than most. So the first thing we want to do is make sure to hold the bell and the stick in a comfortable position. Depending on the size of your hand, you may feel you need to hold more of the bell or less of the bell from the bottom end. Generally, I like to hold the bell right about here so that I can support the weight and leave these fingers available to mute the bell when necessary. As far as the beater, you can use whichever grip you'd like, but I like to have at least a little bit of the stick coming out from the bottom of my hand to help me find the nice balance between the strength of my grip and the weight of the stick when I go to strike the bell. Remember that handheld bells come in different sizes and pitches, and depending on the style of music you're playing, you may want a lower or higher pitched bell. Be sure to reference your favorite records, keeping in mind the musical context to find bells that best fit the music you'll be playing. So let's take a look at a couple of the basic sounds we can get out of the bell and start working on the way we want to strike it. The two tones we're working on are used to keep time on the instrument. The open tone on the mouth of the bell and the muted tone on the body of the bell. Let's play a few open tones while we get used to the weight of the stick and do our best to get a consistent sound. We'll strike the bell right in the middle of the mouth while keeping our fingers away from the underside of the bell to let the open tone really resonate. The key to a consistent sound here is to try and strike the bell in the same place with the same part of the stick. Some players also achieve this tone by using their fingers in their hand that holds the bell to muffle it slightly and compensate for any unwanted overtones. So let's play four open tones on the mouth followed by four open tones that are slightly muffled. Now let's move on to our muted body tone, which we'll also use for timekeeping purposes. We'll want to strike the mid to lower half of the bell while slightly muffling the bell using the fingers in our opposite hand. In some cases, when we want to play at lower volumes or have another option that may blend better with the timbal bell, we can play these muted body tones a little closer to the edge of the bell. So I'll play four muted body tones followed by four muted body tones near the edge of the bell so you can hear the difference. Now let's combine these sounds to create our first groove, which is the standard bongo bell pattern in 2-3 clave. If you're interested in learning more about clave, make sure to head over to congachops.com and check out our lesson on understanding the clave from our conga fundamentals course. So let's check out this two-bar pattern slowly. One, two, three, four.
Now let's work on that one more time up to speed over one of our exclusive practice loops included in a congachops.com membership. One, two, one, two, three, four. So there you have it, a few simple tips and an essential groove to get you started playing your bell. If you're interested in learning more about how to play Latin percussion in depth and step by step, make sure to head over to congachops.com and grab your free 7 day trial for access to over 50 hours of exclusive lessons.